for 27 years. Um, every week he updates us with uh, um, COVID-19 situation from all around the world. He conducts research, gathers it together, and today we're going to speak about should we wear masks, shouldn't we wear masks. Um, there's a lot of information available in the press and online, and a lot of people are confused. So hopefully Professor Brinkart can answer some of our queries. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining afternoon. us again. Hello, Leah. Thank you um, for joining us. Uh, yes. Um, thank you. So, so Moss, so Moss isn't perhaps as romantic a subject as, as, um, as vaccines or testing or the entities of, of anti, uh, antibodies or whatever, but, but slowly, slowly there's been a science, a real science emerging behind masks. Now, why are masks important? Um, firstly, there's been a lot of confusion. Some countries say yes for the use of public, of, of masks in the public, um, uh, outside that is, others say no, it's pointless. Um, firstly, there's no doubt that health workers do need to, uh, to to reduce their exposure to volumes of the virus, and therefore they're the ones who are getting the N95, the, the, the top models, um, model respirators, if possible. They need full PPE, some of them, you know, depends where they're working, and, and they have to be protected, so there's no doubt about it. Um, the question, the, the arguments rotate on, as to whether we should be wearing masks on the streets or not. Now, now the problem now the, the, the problem is that, that there are masks and masks. Um, there are these expensive N95s or even N99s. And the, the, the figure um, refers to the um, to the, the, the size of the molecule that goes for that mask. So, so the higher the number, the more resistant they are. And of course, the first thing about the mask is it should not stop you breathing. <laughs> it's pointless if it stops you breathing. Um, and 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 but it's got to at least reduce the load. Now, now, finally, there is a consensus. Even the British Medical Journal, in its last editorial, has advocated masks. And in the States, the Center for Communicable Diseases, the CDC, uh, the, the CDC is not only recommending masks in the public, but also giving instructions how to how to do make your own mask. So what you have to do is go CDC, make your own mask. Now, in public, um, what, what we need to do really is, is, is to realize that this virus thrives on contact. Now, just because we are seeing low numbers here, thankfully, doesn't mean that there are low numbers in reality out of there in the public, because there are a lot of young people, especially, who are asymptomatic. And you have to remember that many of the cases we found, um, for example, pregnant women going to, 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 to Mother Day for an operation for a cesarean section or for an induction, and are being found to be positive, are in fact being are in fact asymptomatic, so they're just carriers. Uh, and the same in, in, in the Health Fire Center with lots of carriers, and it's the same everywhere. For sure, that that this virus is widespread, and uh, we'll be talking about tests now in the next session. Um, so it is prudent not to put our guard down now at this stage. Remember that our first cases in Mar on March the seventh, there were only two cases, and in the UK. In February 28, there were only 19 cases, okay? And now in the UK, we've got uh, well over 150,000 with all those deaths. Um, here, we've been lucky, but if we let put our guard down, we might not be so lucky second time or possibly third time around, because there is the possibility that we will have waves. Now, that's this, now for first, let's get into masks. So yes, cloth masks made properly as per instructions from CDC, or you can get into the site of BMJ here, um, it should be worn if you're going to go to anywhere where there is likely to be a concentration of people. Now, we have seen over the weekend, unfortunately, lots of people congregating on beaches and whatever. You cannot keep people in lockdown forever, but at least we can take sensible precautions in social distancing and wearing masks. The virus needs people to thrive. If the contact between person to person is broken, the virus will die and will evaporate, will destroy itself, and, and um, there might be a small pool left somewhere, but at least this particular epidemic will be over. And we need to buy time until vaccines are out. Yes. So, so now there are the surgical masks, there are cloth masks. Some cloth masks are better than others. Cloth masks normally have got to be at least three layered or two layered with some filter in between. Um, they can be manufactured. Oddly enough, there are the, the different the materials. So, so, so cloth towels 
and um, the tea towels that we use, dishcloths basically, seem to have a very good sort of material for, 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 for masks. These are not the be all and end all of everything, as I say, it's just to reduce the volume. So health workers need to reduce volume because they're exposed and the less waves of virus they get, the less likely they are to have one infection and be a severe infection. Um, and out, out there in public, if we can protect ourselves a bit, then the use of masks is also quite useful. So, so, and just uh, very quickly about yes. the material that we use yes. for masks. Um, obviously, if the right material is not used, the mask can actually um, increase the virus, um, the contamination that comes into you with the moisture. Is that correct? Yes, you have to be very careful about the mask you use. Firstly, um, the, 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 the cloth has got to be of a sufficient dense weave to prevent droplets from going through. Now, now, now the virus is spread through aerosol or through droplets. And although the virus is very small in itself, 0.12 of a micron, which is extremely small, uh, even as viruses go, um, it's still carried on droplets. So these droplets do get stuck. Uh, and and, and there, there is a way on how to put on your mask without touching your face, and there's a way how to take it off. Now, there is advice that you can wash your mask and reuse it, but it needs to be washed in soap. And don't forget, soap is the big enemy of this virus, because the soap, soap will dissolve the virus's coat, which is made out of lipid, and soap has got um, a, a lipid-loving bit and a water-loving bit, and this as you know, as in housewife knows, as any one of us knows who washes clothes, we know that's how your oil and fatty stains and bacon stains and morning breakfast, uh, British English breakfast stains, get off your clothes and off your tights with soap. So, so soap is as good as alcohol. I've been, um, we've come to the very end of our short broadcast today. You'll be with us again on Thursday, yes, where yes. we can catch up on some more masks and the tests, and we'll have a bit of a longer session. Thank you, Professor Brinkart. Thank you. We'll see some pictures. Thank, thank you. you. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. That was Professor Mark Brinkart. He'll be back with us on Thursday during this time, again at 5.45. I'll be with you again tomorrow. Any uh, queries, questions on masks and tests, please direct them to NET Television or to me directly. And I wish you a very good evening. I'm Leah Ho. Good night.